Happy Thursday, everybody. I pray all is well. My name is Michael Gibson. I'm talking on why I go to church. Um, I hope that everybody is finding this time to be an opportunity just to reconnect with your loved ones, to reconnect with your friends. Also an opportunity just to prioritize and really decide what do I value? I know for me and my family, this has been a time of adjustment and it's given me an opportunity just to you know, get closer with my kids, begin to understand some of this new math as I call it. So I hope that you use this time wisely. We live in a time that is different than every other time that we've seen in America, truthfully, because there's a lot of questions, there's a lot of things that people are looking for an answer for. I honestly believe that inside of every problem, there is a solution. There is an opportunity for us to find an answer. It's been a little different because I've been going live for almost three years now, but to now see all of these people going live and expressing their heart and talking about some good things and some people talking about some bad things has just really been eye-opening because this platform has really allowed a lot of us to minister hope, to minister grace, and to minister pe peace to people. So I hope that this broadcast today will just provide a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of hope to somebody. I don't consider myself greater or better than anybody. I just want to share my heart and that's where why I go to church came from just an opportunity for me to share my heart so on Thursdays I share my heart also you can hear me on um, the internet radio as well at KLPWC Kingdom Radio you can look that app at the Google Play Store you can look up that app um, in, in the Apple um, platform as well so I come on there on Fridays at 3 a.m. and 5 p.m. And I come on there on Sundays at 3 a.m. and 5 p.m. as well. So if you want to catch some of the former broadcasts, you can go there. So this is a great time to be alive because I know that things are happening and things are changing. So today I just wanted to talk about to draw close enough with the social distance. I know right now we're we're living in a world that they are calling for social distancing, but I draw inspirations from everything and anything. And while I was uh, showering this morning, the Lord just dropped in my spirit and my heart, and I just wanted to share what he gave me. And he actually said, enough with the distance, enough with the distance. We have been distant from God from so long that we have lost our communication. We have basically become so used to the social network that we have become antisocial. See, the social network has made you antisocial. There was a time that you would come home and you could sit at the dinner table and everyone could talk about their day, but now the time has come where we sit around the dinner table and we want to have our faces and our devices. We want to have our devices in our hands. So instead of joining hands together, sitting around the table and praying and blessing your meal, you're so quick to go to the latest app and social media feed. What has happened is that we have lost the human interaction. We have lost the human connection. What we have done is become socially distant. I remember being at holidays where my niece would be over and the person that came with her to the holiday meal will be sitting right next to them, her but yet she would be texting the person as if the person was a million miles away. Blessing to you, um, Pam. And what has happened is in this age of social media, we have really become so antisocial. We have lost interpersonal skills. We have lost interpersonal relationships. We have lost conflict resolution. We have lost the ability to articulate a message in a cohesive sentence. We have become so used to abbreviating everything, L-O-L, S-M-H, O-M-G, that we don't really know how to communicate properly. So during this time 
of us being forced to be together, we have lost the ability to want to be together. I tell you right now that the thought of being trapped in the house with your kids, and I said trapped, for some people is just, it's, it's like a horror movie <laughs> to be like, I'm going to be trapped in my house with my kids for this amount of time. Allow this to be a moment for you to reconnect back to what is important to you. See, the social media has had us so antisocial that we are streaming something in one room and streaming something in another room, and I'm guilty as the next person or the next party, for I have many televisions in my house. I have a TV on every floor. So that allows me to have the opportunity just to say, if you don't like what's playing in this room, go into another room. But because we have so many points of access, because we have so many different ways to get information, what has happened is we are not closer, but we are more distant. We don't know what each other likes. We don't know how each other feels because most of our interactions is through emojis. And emojis only tell half the stories. Most of our interactions are through text. And text really don't give all of the stories. Text doesn't give context. That's text doesn't give points of emphasis. Text doesn't give facial expressions. And I honestly feel is that through the move of social media, we forgot that real live touch, tangible touch is what is really needed. What our children really need is love. What the world really needs is love. And right now we're at a point in our society where we're being told that we can't love, that we can't touch, that we can't see. And the thing about this human disposition is that when we are told that we can't do something, we want it even the more. So when someone tells you that you can't go to the store to get something to eat or to a restaurant to get something to eat, it's amazing how now you feel like you want to go to the restaurant and get something to eat. I think it is time for us to say enough with the social distance from our creator. Because we've had so many ways to connect with each other. I have now connected with friends that I haven't seen for 25 years. And we use the word friend so lightly, but most of the people that we are connected with in our social media platforms, we don't even really know. Most of the people that we are connected with in our social media platforms, we don't know if they are a closet ax murderer. We have no idea but yet we still call them friends because that is the construct that social media has given us. So we will call people friends that are really just acquaintances and really just associates. But because social media has put in our forefront the word friends, we classify people as friends. Social media has allowed us to find our value in a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a heart or a smiley face. And really what you understand is that you haven't received a real hug in a real long time. So I encourage you, if your children are home with you today, if you're home with your spouse today, literally hug them, kiss them, look into their eyes, talk to them. Enough with the social distance. The problem that we have right now, we are so social distanced that we have become disconnected from reality that we would rather film a tragedy than to stop the tragedy. I just think right now in this time that we live in today, that we have to draw closer more than ever before. I think in the time that we live in today, where we have so many people espousing about this God and about this gospel, but their life doesn't show anything of the gospel because they're not close to God, so they don't have a heart for people. They have a heart for money. They have a heart for things. But this time that we live in today, I honestly believe is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah, were well, you really going to find out if you love God? Because now the things that you thought were so important, like the edifice that you go to worship in, now you don't have a place to go to worship. Have you been worshiping on your own time, in your quiet time by yourself? If you watch this broadcast for any length of time, I say the same thing over and over. We are the church. The place where you go to worship is literally just a building. 
You can go to church anywhere. So now is the time for you to actually go to church in your home. Now this is the time for you to go to church in your basement. Now this is the time for you to go to church in your living room. Now this is the time for you actually just to get an opportunity to reconnect back with God. Because like I said, enough with the social distancing. Because the social network has made us anti-social. The social network has made us so distracted that we forgot to keep the main thing the main thing. Right now, you will see a lot of people saying this prayer. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Well, who is it's my people? My people was the people that are supposed to be believing in God. My people are the people that actually were supposed to be already worshiping God. My people, if they said, if they were to um, humble themselves and seek my face, well, if you were his people, you should have already been in front of his face. But many of us have become so distracted by social media. Many of us have become so distracted by the curls of this world that we actually haven't taken the time to connect with God. If we look at many of our apps, how many of us have multiple Bibles on our phone? How many of us have multiple ways to study and get closer to God? Many of us, our phones are filled with mindless information. And I have things. I have ESPN app on my phone. I have CNET app on my phone. So I have apps. But what I want you to know is that those apps has basically caused a bridge, caused a separation between you and God. Because you've been so busy that you don't find time to communicate with God. Now you got all this time on your hand and now you're wondering what I'm gonna do with all this time on my hand. Or your stress level has raised to another level because now your kid's home and now you gotta figure out an opportunity to work with your kids because you have allowed the system to raise your kids for a long time. You've allowed teachers to fill in the gap for a long time. And now it's your opportunity to fill in the gap with your kids. Now it's your opportunity to realize how much time and how to prioritize your time. Now is that time. So what does this have to do with why I go to church? Well, I go to church because I want to draw close to God. Like I said earlier, inside of every problem, there is an answer. Inside of every problem, there is an answer. But you got to sort consult God and seek after God and ask God for wisdom. Now, you have a lot of people saying, well, why are all these churches shutting down? Because we live in this world. We have to abide by the laws of the land. So if the laws of the land say that you cannot congregate, you cannot congregate. However, that doesn't stop you from communing with God. There's a very powerful saying, and I think we should get it in our spirit during this time. It says money moves the earth, but prayer moves heaven. When I say draw close to God, prayer is simply just a personal conversation between you and the creator God. That's what prayer is. Prayer is taking time out of your schedule and just saying, look, I know I have a lot of time on my hand. I know it's an opportunity for me to mindly scroll Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Periscope. I know it's an opportunity for me to do all of that. But what I want you to do is use this opportunity to draw close to God. This is not the time to be wayward. This is not the time to be distant. This is not the time to think that you're smaller than God. Because all I know is this. Jesus Christ is real. I know that for real. The other thing that I know is that the government, they're playing games. <laughs> I said they're playing games because they're playing with our lives. One minute, it's not that serious, and the next minute, it's that serious. One minute, it's, you know, a couple of days. Now it's two weeks. Some places have shut down school for the whole year. And when men don't have an answer, I go to the rock that is higher than I. I'm just telling you what I do. So I'm saying enough of the social distance. I believe that if people were really connected with God, there would have been a warning in the earth. Now, some people some people receive the warning in the earth, but other people don't want to see and hear that side of God. Some people don't want to recognize and realize that the little G of this world, the little God of this world 
is causing chaos in the world. And people will say, well, how does a loving God allow this thing to happen? Well, guess what? We still live in a world with human beings and human beings have choice. And when you have choice, that means you have the ability to do your free will. And when you have free will, you have the ability to do good or evil. God's will is manifested through the sons and daughters of God operating and obeying his voice. So if we as believers don't operate and obey the voice of God, then God's will won't be done on this earth. Yes, he's a spirit and he works through people. Just like the enemy, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call them, demons, disembodied spirits, they need people to work through. So don't allow this time on your hand to be an opportunity where you allow the enemy of your faith to work through you. Now, I put this passage of scripture at the end of almost all of my poetry videos, but I wanted to read it today because I found that it's um, important. I feel in my heart that it's an important to share this scripture, so I wanted to share the scripture. I'm going to start at Romans, the eighth chapter, and it's verse 19. And it says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. The whole world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. And it's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to draw close to God and understand that God ain't playing with us. And I don't mean that in any kind of mean or harsh way. But many times it takes something serious to happen for you want to seek after God. Many times it takes for something serious to happen for you now to want to connect with that loved one that you've been neglecting to connect with. I want you to know that I don't know when this is going to end. But I do know that we all have an opportunity to connect with God and to draw closer to God. And don't allow social media to keep making you antisocial. What I would tell you is that fear will torment you if you allow it. And if you keep your television and your social media new feed tuned into what you are currently listening to over the broadcast media. Whatever you magnify or give the most attention to grows. I've stated this before that faith is neutral. Faith is neutral. Faith is just simply believing in something enough to move on it. That's what faith is. So since faith is neutral, whatever you feed your belief system is what will move you. So if you feed your belief system negativity and fear, you will move in fear and negativity. If you feed your belief system and positivity, then you will move in positivity. I heard Pastor um, Dallas say this on his newsfeed and it jumped so clearly in my heart, it, it resonated with me. And it basically said the opposite of fear isn't faith. The opposite of fear is information. The more information you know about something, the less fearful you will most likely be. The more information you know about something, the less fearful you will be. So if you want to minimize your fear, you need to get more truth about a situation. Get more truth about it, because the more knowledge you know about a situation, the better plan that you will make on how to deal with that situation, the better plan. So the, the challenge that we face is that a lot of the information, we don't know what is true and what is not true. So if that information that you're receiving today across your television, across your social media feeds are causing you to live in fear, simply turn it off. Don't bury your head in the sand, but simply turn it off because you don't want to feed you don't want to lend your belief system 
to erroneous information. Because again, like I said, the opposite of fear is information. The more information you know about a thing, the more prepared you are to fight against the thing. The more prepared you are to go on the offensive side of a thing than the defensive side of a thing. Because a lot of people, hey, Roz, a lot of people don't have faith right now. Because faith is just believing in something enough to actually make it tangible and move in it. What you need right now is truthful information. Go get some information from credible sources, not memes. Go get some real life information. And what I can tell you is that the best information I have is in this book. So that's why I bring you the book every week. See, once you get more information, you'll be less fearful because it actually says fear exists where the will of God is not known. So there are a lot of people fearful because they don't know the will of God for their life. A lot of people are fearful because they don't know the will of God on the earth. A lot of people are fearful because they don't know that there is not always a pleasant side of Christ. A lot of people are fearful because they're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, see, if you knew Christ, you will know that judgment does happen in the earth. If you knew Christ, you would understand that plagues have happened in before. Remember the frogs? Remember the boils? Remember the locusts? Remember all these things has happened in the past. Remember the armies that destroyed the temples in 70 AD? Destruction has happened in the past. This stuff has happened in the past. But what has happened is that you don't have a correct picture of who God is. And because you don't have a correct picture of who God is, it's because you have been socially disconnected from God. I'm telling you, enough with the social distance. God is calling us back to him. God wants us to draw close to him, to draw close to him. Enough with this distance. Enough with, you know, you haven't been in front of God that he has to look you up on the church roll. You know, you're a member, but no one knows you're a member because you're a closet member. God is tired of the closet members. God is tired of these people that just come in to pray to him when things are in chaos, when things are in trouble. God, God wants you to seek after him because you ought to seek after him and, and want to know his will and want to know his way and want to know his face. So a lot of people calling on God, but God don't necessarily hear all your prayers. Yeah, because some people are praying with the wrong motive. Some people are praying are not a child of his. So I'm not talking about the people that are looking to know who God is right now. I'm talking about the people that are deliberately doing things contrary to the will of God. So they've heard this grace gospel. They've heard this gospel of peace, but they deliberately live their life opposed to who God is. So I want to challenge you to get your life right. Get your life right. Because I don't know how long you're going to be quarantined. I don't know how long you're going to be in your house. But what I want you to do is use this opportunity to reconnect back to God. Use this opportunity to, to read this word. Use this opportunity to pray. Use this opportunity maybe to turn your plate down. Use this opportunity to just get back with God. So I want to read something to you. It's found in James chapter 4. And it's verse number 6. James chapter four, verse number six. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but give grace unto the humble. Verse seven, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse eight, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Verse 9, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaven. Is Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. It is God that does the lifting. Allow God to lift us up this morning. Allow God to lift us up for this season that we live in. Because... If you want the enemy to flee from you, if you want the enemy to, because because I'm not talking about somebody literally chasing you, because right now we need a moment of intimacy. We need a moment to allow into me God see. We need a moment to actually get intimate and close with God, and an opportunity to get close with God 
what you have to do is cut off all the things that are interfering with your relationship with God. Cut off all the things that is causing you to be fearful. Cut out all the things that is causing your spirit to be anxious. Get rid of all the things that is calling you to feel panic. This is not the time to panic. What this time is for you to do is stop being socially distant from God. See, if we weren't socially distant from God, there will be a peace that surpasses all your understanding in your spirit right now. But because some of us has relied on our pastors and our deacons and our elders to talk to God for us, that we have forgotten how to talk to God for ourselves. But when God got up on the cross, when Jesus got up on the cross and he died, the veil was rent. And what he did was give us all access to his kingdom. What he did was give us access to speak to God directly. He says now there is no mediator between God and man. There's none. We don't need a priest to confess our sins to. What we need to do is confess our sins to God. We don't need a priest to commune with God. You don't need your pastor to commune with God for you. You don't need your bishop to commune with God. You don't need your elder to commune with God. You don't need the worship team to commune with God. What you need to do is cut off everything else and start communing with God. Cut off everything else. Stop, stop being so distant from God because I'm telling you, it is God that's going to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. It, it is God that is actually going to, going to quiet your mind during these times. And I know this is not a rah-rah message today. I'm, I'm not trying to be rah-rah today. I'm just trying to give you some food for thought to allow you to think that what we need to do is draw close to God. Draw close to God and he will draw close to you. And what he will do is send you something. So I'm going to read you another verse of scripture. I'm just giving you some word today. I don't normally, on my, why I go to church, I don't always give scriptures. But today I just feel lead, led to give you some scripture. So I'm going to give you another scripture. Because again, if you want your mind to be intact, you need to go to a source that is full of truth. Because remember what I told you that the opposite of fear is information. That's what will get rid of your fear. And a lot of us fear in our life because we don't know what the will of God is for our life. So that gives us the opportunity to be fretful. But I'm going to read you another passage of scripture. It's found in Philippians chapter four. So I'm going to start at verse five, Philippians chapter four, verse five. And I'm reading in the King James Version. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, this is very important to getting your spirit. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7, in the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to talk about the presence of God and what the peace of God will bring when you're in his presence. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Verse 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Verse number 10, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me, having flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Verse number 12, I know both how to be abased, I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to be abound and to suffer not. Verse number 13. 
I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I just read Philippians 4, verse 5 through verse 13. Now I'm going to go just unpack a couple things. And the reason why I say it, it's time to draw close and enough with the social distance, because verse number six says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Remember I told you that money moves earth, but prayer moves heaven through prayer and supplication. Well, thanksgiving, you got to be happy. Let your requests be made known unto God. So we're not praying to some unknown thing. We're praying to God himself. We're praying to Yah, Elohim, El Shaddai. We're, we're, that's who we're praying to, right? So what you need to do is gather your thoughts and start praying to God. Now let's go to verse seven. So in verse number six, it says, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. So let's start communicating with God. And then when you start communicating with God, this is what verse seven says, and the peace of God, which passeth all your understanding, all of your natural reasoning, all your natural reason shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So what I'm trying to tell you to do, if you want to keep your heart and your mind turned off of all the things that is causing you to be anxious, turn it off. I know like a train wreck, some of us want to keep watching and some of us want to stay close to it, but I'm, I'm challenging you to turn it off because this is what I want you to do when you turn the things off that has been distracting you. See, if you were connected with God before all of this, you should be connected with God after all of this. If you wasn't connected with God, you might want to connect with God so that you can get through this. Verse number eight, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. And I'm telling you, things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, you won't find on TikTok. You might find some funny things. You might find some distracting things. You might find some crazy things. And occasionally, you might find some truthful things. Occasionally. But the word of God says, if you want to have that peace, you got to turn on you got to go to the things that are true. What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are of a good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. What I'm trying to help you to do is get the God of peace to be with you. The God of peace. You can't find peace looking at things that won't bring you peace. You can't find peace with things that aren't designed to draw you closer to God. You will never find peace that way. But I want to admonish you today to let God... Now I'm going to change that. I want to challenge you today to take this opportunity to know God for yourself, for yourself. Don't just take Michael Gibson's word for it because my word is not enough because God swore by himself because there was a none greater. So I want you to take this opportunity to seek God for yourself. Now, if you want to find out more about the God, I can help you with that. I can give you some scriptures, but, but enough of the social distance. Because I think part of the reason that we're in this mess is because the believers have been socially distant from God. We have taken this opportunity not to prioritize God, but to prioritize everything in our life. We have taken our kids football season. We have taken our kids baseball season. We have taken our kids basketball seasons. We have taken the opportunity to go on vacations. We have done all these things and we left God out of the mix. But it's amazing when tragedy happens, when something happens, we want to bring God back into the mix. I don't want to let this moment go away where we don't capture the true essence of who God is and what God is. And God is a loving God, but God is a just God. He's a just God. And like I said, the little God of this world has been in charge of a lot of things, and he's been moving and operating through the hearts of men for many, many years. So evil does exist because Lucifer has yet to be bound. And I said Lucifer. 
So there's an opportunity for us to uh, understand that all is not naught. So I'm gonna read you some verses here and I'm looking to the side because uh, I wrote some scriptures down today. And I, I just wanna talk to you about, understand that the fire is needed. Yeah, fire is needed. So if we go to Malachi chapter three, I'm going to read you another verse. Malachi is right before Matthew. Most people know where Matthew is, but a lot of people know where Malachi is if they always try to hit you up with ties for the, for, the, for, for the book of Malachi, but that's not why I want to go to it. I want to go to the book of Malachi because I want to give you some food for thought. I just want to give you some food for thought. Every message don't have to be hoop and hollering because honestly, you're going to find out who knows this word or not because they don't have the organ to back them up right now. You're going to have to find out if you love this word or not because you can't run around your church building. Listen, the word of God is more than an aerobic exercise. The word of God is food for your soul and it is designed to uh, save your life. And if you don't allow this word to get down into your heart, you can you can be very fretful but I don't want you to be fretful, okay? So Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter three, verse number one. It says, behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse number two. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand with when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Verse three. And he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord as an offering and righteousness. See, it says that God is like a refiner fire. Now, the sons of Levi, they were the priests, and they were in charge of giving this gospel because the gospel was handed down by word of mouth. They were responsible for preaching this thing. Now, God has called us now to be priests, and God has called us now to deliver this word. And what is happening right now, there is a refining process going on. But guess what? The trying of your faith work is patience. And a lot of us don't want to be tried. A lot of us don't want to go in the furnace. A lot of us don't want to go through the fire. But it is the fire that, that refines you. It is the fire that purifies you. It is the fire that allows you to see, do you really believe in the thing that you said you believe in? See, a lot of people believe in God when, when things are going well. A lot of people want to praise God when they can go to the building. But a lot of people don't want to praise God when they're in their own house. See, the building is just the building, as I said before. The building shouldn't be the reason why you praise God. You should praise God because you love God. The building shouldn't be the only reason that you pick up the Bible. The building shouldn't be the only reason that you go to church. The building shouldn't be the only pre reason or the time that you sing praises. You need to be singing praises when you're not in the building. You need to be giving thanks when you're not in the building. You need to be thinking and consulting God, just not when you're in the building. The building was just merely an opportunity for us to get together and, and gather and, and be in the presence. But I want to challenge you to stop being socially disconnected from God. Enough with the social distance. Enough with it. Stop allowing just the people that you think is at the forefront to commune with God. This is an individual affair because when I die, I'm going, going to meet God for myself. When my dad died, he met God for himself. When my son passed, he met God for himself. When my grandmother passed, she met God for himself. So when we die, we meet God for ourselves. So it's not the word that I know that's going to help you. Now it's the word that I know that God can allow me to send a word to you to uplift your spirit, to consult after him. But it's the word you know, the word that you kept, the laws that you kept. Now, I understand that we are under grace and that we are not under the law. I get that because we are saved by grace through faith not by works unless that any man should boast. So we are made righteous not by, by our, our works. We are, we are made righteous by our faith. So you got to have faith in God, to believe in God that he is, and you must accept him as Lord and Savior. But there are some things that God wants us to stay away from. So when I die, I die, and I got to meet God. When you die, you die, you meet God. 
I can't say where God is in your life, but what I want you to know is that God is real and God ain't playing, and you need to know him for yourself. If you if you can't see the calamity that's on this earth and recognize that I might need a change because I don't know, what if they declare some laws that prohibit me from doing certain things? The word says, think of those things that are lovely, just pure, honest, and of a good report. Think of those things. Then he said, it is the peace of God that surpasses all your standing will guard your heart and mind. Don't get distracted by all the things that are available to you. Because just because it's close and near to you don't mean that you should be spending all your time with it. Develop a relationship with God. But God has many times talked about the fire. Zechariah 13 and 9, and I will bring the third party through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried, and, sh and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, Lord is my God. See, when you go through the fire, a smart person will begin to call on the name of the Lord. And hopefully when you call on the name of the Lord, you're, on the, you're in the land of the living. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to be gloom and doom. First Peter chapter 1, verse 7. For the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, may be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Jesus Christ. See, there's some things that's going on that's going to try you, that's going to test you. And we think that we will be absolved from trying of our faith. We think that we would be, that we would be absolved from situations, but that's not how it works. But I want to read you another verse. Romans 8:28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called are the called according to his purpose. See, when you get this word in your heart, what it can do is provide a level of peace. And forgive me for looking down, but I printed some things out and I wanted to read them to you. Proverbs 17 and 3. The fining pot for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. The Lord trieth the hearts. So as we go through this moment, as we go through this season, I want to challenge you just to draw close. I want to challenge you to draw closer to God. I want to challenge you to feed yourself. Grocery stores are empty, certain aisles. I mean, if you wanted to wipe your backside, if you didn't already have toilet paper, you really might be out of luck. If you wanted to get some milk, and I'm not saying that you need milk, but if you wanted milk, a lot of those aisles are empty too. Grocery stores may grow empty. Restaurants may close down. But God's word will never run out. I don't care how many shelves are empty in the store. You can never exhaust this word of God. You can never go wrong looking into this word. Again, I know this wasn't a rah-rah message. I know this wasn't something to make you run around, but I honestly believe that some of our problems have been because we have been socially disconnected from God. And I believe that the enemy of our faith many times puts a lot of things in front of us. He's a, he allows technology to connect us, but also uses technology to disconnect us. Don't allow the church doors being forced to close as a reason for you not to go to church. Don't allow people telling you that the world is going to come to an end to make you so fearful that you begin to hoard all kinds of things. What you should do is consult God, consult God. And ask God for um, 
some answers because I, I, I know that God will get us through it. I know that God will get us through it, but you won't be able to withstand. You will not be able to withstand what's going on if you don't draw close to God. You won't be able to withstand it because I feel personally what's going on is beyond human reasoning. I mean, that's just what I feel. You can't make sense out of nonsense. That's from the Hawkins family. My man, John Hawkins, that's one of his favorite quotes. Can't make sense out of nonsense. So I'm not trying to make sense out of nonsense, but what I'm trying to do is get the truth of God's word in my heart. And I want to get the truth of God's word about the situation. I want to get the truth about God's word for my family. Like I told you before, the opposite fear, how you combat it is with information. You combat fear with information. So get the truth of God's word in your heart. Find out what God says for your future, for your destiny. And stop allowing this word to feed you with negativity. Because as I stated earlier, that fear, if it's fed, it'll grow. Just like your faith, if fed, will grow because faith is neutral. Whatever you feed it the most is where it leans. So stop allowing the world to feed you junk. Stop allowing the world to feed, world to feed you junk and actually get some nutrients. Get, 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 some, get some psalms in your life. Get some psalms in your life. Get some proverbs in your life. If you want to know how to move during this time, I, I recommend reading the book of Proverbs. Any version that you like. I prefer the King James Version because that's where my heart is at. When I need clarity, I get a book and I I will uh, get some new definitions. I will read definitions. But I, I, if you want wisdom, read Proverbs. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And he wanted to know how to rule over God's people. He, he wanted to... Uh, he wanted to get closer to God, and I just want you to get closer to God. I'm, I'm going to close out. I feel led to just read a couple more scriptures, and then I'm going to get off of here again. wasn't really trying to be rah-rah today. I just wanted to let you know that half of our problems is because we have been socially disconnected from God. And I believe that this is an opportunity for us to get connected with God. And you're going to see more people online. You're going to see more people speaking. I, I would encourage you to... Listen to people that's giving you the true word. When I say the true word, giving you some scripture, giving you some context. You don't got to listen to me. You don't got to believe anything I got to say. But right now I'm giving you the word of God. I'm not giving you just some wonderful speech off the top of my head. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you scripture today because you need scripture to stand on. Scripture to stand upon. Allow the word to be the substratum. Allow the, the word to be the substance. Allow the word to be the footers and the basement. Allow the word to be the footers, the basement, and the first floor. You need a firm foundation. And I think the only way to build a firm foundation is to build it on a rock. The more sure word of prophecy is that found in this book. Now I'm going to read you this because I just feel led to read it, so I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to get off of here and tend to my children. Yeah, my own natural children. Yeah, I, I have two children, if you didn't know. If you follow me for a little bit of time, you know I got children. But let me see. Let me get to the scripture. Now, I'm turning the pages. I'm turning the book. Yeah, sometimes we got to... Um... <laughs> Listen. I'm going to say that after I read the scripture. Let me read the scripture. I don't, I don't want to get on a tangent. Romans 8. And I'm going to read uh, verse 5. Actually, no. I'm going to just start at Romans 8, verse 1. I just want to read this to you. Therefore... There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. So in other words, God sent his son in sinful flesh. Sinful flesh is just literally our, our actual exoskeleton, the body that we lived in. So God sent his son through flesh, through Mary, okay? That's all that means, to condemn sin in the flesh. So because sin was committed by Adam in the flesh, God sent his only begotten son through Mary, father with Jesse. I mean, not through Jesse. I'm drawing a blank on his, um, I'm drawing Joseph, excuse me, through Joseph. Joseph and Mary, they raised Jesus. So he was in the flesh. He died in the flesh. And because he died in the flesh, he was able to have victory over the flesh, right? Okay. Verse number four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are, are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. This is why I'm challenging you to draw close to God because I don't want you to be carnally minded because verse six states, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want you to have the peace that I've talked about. I want you to have that peace. I need you to have that peace. And that peace only comes through a spirit. That peace comes through knowing more about him. You, you, you gotta know him for yourself. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to be funny. You you literally gotta know him for yourself. And I'm gonna read you with this other scripture in Romans. There's another scripture that I want to read you because I just feel led to read it to you. Romans 10, verse number eight. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse number nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Verse number 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the reason why I want you to draw close to God, and I don't want you to be no more socially distant from God, because in Romans... Verse uh, chapter eight, chapter eight. I'm going to just flip back over to you. I'm going to read it again just in case you just jumped on. Verse number six, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want you to have life and peace. So I want you to grab hold to these scriptures and write them down and begin to read them for yourself. Begin to meditate on them, read the whole verse so that you can get context of this because I don't want you to be lost. Verse number nine, Romans 10. That if thou shalt confess with the mouth, thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse number 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All I want you to do today is draw close to God. That's all I want you to do is draw close to God. That's all I want you to do. Sometimes we can we can make it so deep 
And I, I don't want you to be deep. I want you to understand that this thing is, is simple. This thing is so simple that if we actually begin to just to dive in this word, we can have what the word says we can have. So I'm going to close out with one of our church confessions that I use or that we use at my church. And I just want you to listen to the words because I want you to keep faith. Faith confession. We, we used to say this every single Sunday. We actually would have confessions for like 30 minutes before service. So I'm just going to read this. It's the faith confession. It says, in the name of Jesus, I am a believer. I believe God's word. I am what the word says I am. I have what the word says I can have. I can do what the word says I can do. In Jesus' name, I render ineffective every negative word I have spoken, every word that has been contrary to the truth of God's word. From this moment forward, I will acknowledge the good things that are in my heart by Christ Jesus. I'm saying that now, out of the good treasure of my heart, only good things will come to pass. I am the righteousness of God, a new creation, an heir of God, and a joint heir with Jesus. I've been delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. I've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, redeemed from the curse of the law, redeemed from sickness and disease, poverty and death. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. He never leaves me nor forsakes me. Since the greater one dwells within me, I can overcome every situation. The faith of God resides within me and through it, I have the victory that overcomes the world. I thank you, Father, that I can have all of these things. I believe it in my heart. I have released it with my mouth. So be it, it will surely come to pass in Jesus' name. Again, that is our faith confession that we read every Sunday at my church. And I just wanted to leave you with that confession of faith. But again, my name is Michael Gibson. This is why I go to church, to draw close enough with the social distance. We need to stop being distant from God. We need to draw close to God. And I want to say this, that um, prayer changes things. It really does. And I want to encourage you all just to develop a prayer life. I want to encourage you all to find a place where your soul can be fed. But the first place that you need to make the church is your home. I don't know when legally they will open up the church doors for some of these churches because they're just so big. But you can go to church in your home every single day. Every single day you can commune with God. But if this message has blessed you, I ask that you share it out. Again, this wasn't a rah-rah message. That wasn't the intent of this message. I just wanted to give you some food for thought. So I gave plenty of scriptures that you can read, that you can glean, that you can learn from. But I really want you to draw close to God. I really do. I pray peace and blessings to you, Facebook land. And again, thank you for taking time out of your schedule just to hop on this broadcast with me. Be blessed. 